Welcome to a C++ tutorial. This is considered uh, a version of number one, how to actually download a C++ compiler and a integrated development environment, IDE, for free. There's a couple of options. Today we're going to download Microsoft, Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2015. So type that into your Google browser just like that and hit enter. I'm sure Bing and everything else will pop up something very similar. And what we're going to get is a bunch of links. We want to go down to the Microsoft.com link. So make sure you get the Microsoft one. It's probably the easiest. Uh, Visual Studio might work, but in this example, let's jump down to download Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2015. It's straight from Microsoft.com, so I'm going to trust it and click on that. You end up with this big splash screen here, and if you scroll down, Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2015, pick your language and click download. The easiest way is probably to use the executable file, that .exe. Uh, this .iso would allow you to burn that to a DVD and use it as like a DVD installation. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, community.exe and click next. And it's going to probably pop up this here. Depends on what browser you're using. It might pop up differently. But go ahead and save that file. Open that file back up by clicking on it. However way your browser allows you to do that. And go ahead and click Run if you trust it, which it's a Microsoft site. I'm using Microsoft products. I'm going to go ahead and trust it. So this might take a few minutes, and I hope to edit most of this out of the video. Uh, depending on how long it takes. But I want to walk you through the entire process. So instead of editing it, maybe I'll just talk to you about C++ and what's going on here. So while this is downloading, we have Visual Studio that's downloading. Let me show you another compiler that you can use. We can go back to google.com and we can go to Dev C++. That's another one. You can click on the download link. This one's going to probably come from SourceForge. It's got a lot of high ratings. Um, you can go to SourceForge click on the download button. Um, it's not exactly super easy to navigate in my opinion. Uh, this is probably the download button. So click on this. And I'm sorry, I just, you know, cluttery pages, I get confused on what to download. So click on download. And it brings you to another page. You see where the confusion comes in? Um, it tells me my download. Or well, Dev C++. That's not what I'm asking to download. You see the confusion here, right? And I have pop-ups. I don't like any of this. Um, this is what I'm looking for. Is this Dev C++? Maybe I'm gonna go ahead and click the back button. There's got to be a direct link somewhere. <laughs> Well, maybe that is it. DevCPP download. And this is a pet peeve of mine is um, pop-ups after pop-ups. you got things like this. You've got all kinds of uh, noise in the background. No offense to SourceForge, but how do I know what I'm trying to download here? This definitely looks like what I'm supposed to download, the DevCPP app. I can also download this at the same time. I think my community is asking a question, so let's let's jump back to that. So Visual Studio Community 2015, choose your installation location. You all know how to install things by now, I'm sure. You can do custom or default. I'm gonna go ahead and do I'm gonna go ahead and do default. Um, do you agree with the license? Sure. Let it install. You're gonna have to click yes. You've installed things before, so I'm not going to go through that too much. Uh, go ahead and download, if you'd like, the DevCPP as well. This is a awesome little environment as well, and we do the same thing. We click on the installer. You probably shouldn't try to install them both at the same time, but I'm going to go ahead and see if my computer can handle it. Third option. Let's go to Google.com. Let's go to online C++ compiler Oop. install a language for dev CPP English sounds good I agree sounds good here and install you all know how to install so I'm not gonna go through that 
online C++ compiler. CPP.sh is very uh, well known. I've used this before, especially when you don't have any IDE. So here's an example that pops up with C++ shell, or CPP.sh is what it stands for. They give you an example here, and this is a default program that says, well, a bunch of stuff, which you don't know what C++ is yet, I, I, would, I would imagine. Um, so let's go ahead and just delete all this stuff, including this, and keep a couple key features that we're going to use for pretty much every program. We are going to use the include IO stream. Whether you know much about that or not yet, that is going to be strictly in all of our programs for input output, that's what the IO stands for, and stream. Stream it to the monitor and input from the keyboard is what's what this is going to allow us to do. Integer main, that's what this int is. Int is a data type. Main is the name of a function. You can have many functions in a C++ program. However, every C++ program for our situations will always consist of a main. It will be the first function executed. Have an integer in front of this function called main means that when main is completely done with what it's doing, it's going to return to whatever called that function a value. That value is an integer, like a mathematical integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, negative 1, negative 2, 0, those are all integer values, not a decimal value. That's a difference. So integer will be returned. Now what is call in main? Right now, the only thing that can possibly call main is the operating system itself. When you double click an executable file, it says run main. And so when main is finished, it'll send a number back to the operating system. Specifically, it's going to send it back to this Windows operating system or whatever is underlying here. It might be Unix, it might be Linux, it might be anything. It could be a Mac. I have no idea what this is. But you can return a digit. So that being said, let's check our status here. So Visual Studio is still um, set up being set up. DevCPP looks like it's done, but we're going to go ahead and finish up with the C++ or CPP.sh first, and then we'll run a DevC++ and we'll follow on with the Visual Studio Community Edition and run our first programs. Okay, the very easiest program is the Hello World. You're going to see this with every programming language almost. STD colon colon C out. That is a it stands for standard. Standard C out. C out to what? C out to the monitor. And the two little double arrows to the left are going to insert or push the text that I'm about, about to write to the C out stream, basically. So, hello world in quotes, semicolon. Every C line of code, for the most part, has a semicolon at the end to dictate this is the end of the line. So this program will only consist of spitting out this text, hello world. It's going to push it to the stream called C out. C out is a part of this IO stream library, which tells it how to exactly C out to the monitor. Let's click on run. Uh, excuse me. Let's copy this. Control C or right click, copy. Just in case, now we're using an online compiler here. When I click run, I don't really know if something might screw up somewhere, my internet connection might be lost. I don't want to lose this, especially if I have three or four hundred lines of code. So copy the whole thing into your clipboard just in case. 99% uh, of the time you're not going to use an online compiler, but I wanted to show it to you for those of you that don't want to download uh, the community version or the dev C++ and you just want to try a couple quick little programs. So click on run. Um, program running and see at the bottom it says hello world that's our program. Now this is a simulation because it's within a browser this typically would open up a console window in Windows It'll be a Win32 console application. So it'll look kind of like that DOS prompt thing. And it's going to spit out the word hello world. And then the program itself actually doesn't do anything afterwards except for end. So it's going to actually pop up a DOS prompt window. 
spit out hello world so fast that you probably won't see it, and then close. In fact, we didn't even return a value like we should. Every C++ program with the main function should return a value, some sort of exit success, exit failure. Um, typically with Windows programs, you would do return zero. We'll get into later where you can return exit success and it'll be multi-platform um, non-specific. You click run, it should run the same thing. Hello world. You can also add text, but if you see, let's do another line. I'm Mark. You're going to see that it concatenates this I'm Mark with the hello world on one line. And it looks kind of funky and ugly. Hello world, I'm Mark. So let's go ahead and put some end lines in there. I'm sorry, you do the concatenation is what they might call that. Less and less in symbol. And you type in standard and L. And L stands for end line. Start a new line at the next time you use CL. Click run. Hello world, I'm Mark. Another way to do this instead of end line is to use what they call an escape character. So we're going to use a backslash n, which stands for end line. In fact, it, it should be directly after the D, backslash n. And it is the end of my statement, so semicolon. And the backslash n is no different than a carriage return. If I hit run, hello world, I mark, it does the same thing. Underlying, there's a little bit slight differences, something to do with buffers and when to actually print this stuff. Um, if, if the computer was very heavily uh, bogged down with other processes, this will probably run no problem, hello world, I mark. But if I had the end line in there, that's a stopping point basically where a process can go do something else and then spit out I mark when it's done. Let's say we're multitasking with multiple programs. Um, so the backslash n versus the end l is just a slight difference that you probably never see the difference anytime soon. So that's it for a C++ program. I don't want to make this video very long, but I'm also installing Visual Studio, and I have Dev C++. Now that we have the C++ online compiler working, let's go ahead and run this again in Dev C++, which is also free, and it's very convenient and good. So click on Finish. Let's run this. Before I run it, I am going to go to the Tools, configure uh, my editor options, I hate auto completion, so I'm going to go to the completion tab and I'm going to click on symbol completion and I am not going to enable it. Now mine's set default already like that because I've already downloaded this program many times over and it's probably kept my preferences in there. And I also want to go to the fonts and I want to keep my size very large so that you can see it on the screen on YouTube. So that's how my settings are, but you might want to go to completion, click on the symbol completion tab and you might want to play around with some of these single completion options. Okay, so file, new. New project is what you want. What kind of project? A basic project, a console application. We don't want to mess with Win32 uh, tab. We're going to go to basic and console application. Like I said, a DOS prompt, basically. Make sure it says C++ and name your project my first program, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't make a difference right now. Hit OK. Uh, save it. I'm going to go ahead and save it right here in my default. You're going to want to save it in a directory that makes sense to you, but I've created so many of these that I'm just going to keep it in this folder. So then this pops up a bunch of um, things that you don't know about yet because you haven't seen this before, an argument within the function. You haven't seen a comment. That's what this forward slash star means don't actually execute any of this. This is just extra comments. In fact, this comment is an actual horrible comment because you never want to use what they're recommending here, system pause. So let's just go ahead and delete that comment completely and I'll show you a different way to write comments. Forward slash forward slash will be a comment. This is my first program. That means it's not being executed. When this actually does compile and run, nobody will ever see this code except for you. When you compile this and send it off to the commercial world, this is gone. It will never be there. It has no effect on your program whatsoever. Sometimes you accidentally click over here and things happen, so I'll just unclick that. This is considered the gutter area, and we'll talk more about that in later episodes or tutorials. So this first program, um, like I said, we don't know what all this means yet, so let's get rid of it so we can start from scratch. 
we know that integer main is needed for every program, like I said before. And main returns a value. It's automatically set us up so that we're returning a zero, which typically means in a Windows environment, exit successful. It means this program was executed and closed correctly. Uh, we'll get into more of that later, later, later. Okay, so like I said, white space doesn't matter. So this bracket can be here, it could be up there, it doesn't matter. And let's go ahead and do that hello world again. And I'm going to show you something sort of off here, just like I was talking about. Hello world and semicolon. Now, to run this without the compiler, I'm sorry, without the online compiler, we would go to execute and you have all these options here. What you really want to do is probably compile and run, which is F11 to the shortcut key. Click on that and the first time you do it, you're going to have to save this file. Uh, I'm going to keep it as default. I'm going to override my other one here. Yours probably won't override because you don't have a main.cpp already. Do, uh, do I want to replace it? Yes. Okay, so all of your errors and warnings are down here in the bottom area. This is the compile log. And now we have a prompt that looks just like the DOS prompt. It says hello world. And then this added extra stuff, all these dashes, um, and it gives you a little bit of, of statistics of what's going on here. That's part of the integrated development environment. We didn't actually put this in our program, so this is extra. Now, when you go to actually compile this for commercial use, this won't happen. It'll actually spit out hello world and close immediately. Um, so the same thing works. This is a little bit prettier, a little bit easier to maintain than the online version, considering you can't even save the online versions. So I definitely highly recommend downloading Dev C++ or the Community Edition, which is still downloading. And I'm going to have to um, edit some of this video because it's taking longer than I expected. Anyway, so that's your very first program in C++. Remember, you must include this I.O. stream if you want to print anything to the monitor or if you want to take any input from the keyboard. That's a very first crucial step. If you are already using a community version of Visual Studio, you're going to see something a little bit weird called include stdafx.h. We're going to get into that when we do the community version of this Hello World. With that being said, I'm going to close this one out, and the next episode I'll go ahead and finish up this Visual Studio.